Welcome to It's Your Case, presented by VetCT.com. I'm Heather, your radiologist on demand for this week. Today's example is an 11-year-old male Staffordshire Terrier with hematuria for two weeks. Once you have reviewed the radiographs using your systematic approach, then you're ready to watch this video. Now, I will highlight some important findings in this case. You'll recall we've been looking um, a lot at the caudal abdomen, most recently focusing on reproductive and urinary tract findings. So on that theme, I'm going to predictably focus in here on the caudal quadrant on the lateral view. Here we see what some people refer to as a double bladder sign. So we see two structures that are rounded and of soft tissue opacity located in the caudal abdomen. When you see the impression of two bladders, you should always consider that one of them is likely to be an enlarged prostate, and such is the case here. Criteria for prostatomegaly in dogs have been reported with both radiographs and ultrasound. It's actually a difficult um, technique similar to um, using vertebral heart score. So anytime that we're using a really um, objective measure, it's a great tool to put in our, um, in our kind of arsenal, but it's never going to be 100% accurate. In this case, if we apply one of the most kind of proven criteria for prostatomegaly in dogs is the, actually the cranial caudal size of the prostate. So I'm going to kind of approximate it to here, but I want to admit to you all that I can't see the caudal margin and compare that to the height sort of of the um, pelvic inlet. So measured from the pubis, which is hard to see here, um, all the way to the ventral aspect of the sacrum or the sacral promontory. And it should be about 70%. So in this case, we can see that it's clearly larger than that. And probably many of you would have thought this just looks like prostatomegaly before I even put any criteria on it. And I would agree with you on that too. Once you're um, focused in on prostatic pathology, some things that you want to include in your sort of systematic approach, make sure that you take a careful look at the sublumbar region. And I'm going to tell you, I think it's difficult in this case for a few reasons. We have a lot of superimposition of the thigh muscle. I'm going to put some arrows to kind of help everybody see it. Here we have the cranial thigh musculature coming all the way across this region. And within that, we even have a fascial plane between two muscle bellies. I'm going to zoom out to allow you to kind of trace the thigh musculature all the way to the stifle. So you can kind of see this is actually quadriceps here layering up. So this superimposition is creating soft tissue opacity in the sublumbar region. We also have a little bit of radiographic obliquity. You can see that in the pelvis as well as in the vertebral column. So all of that is going to contribute potentially um, misleadingly to the impression of increased soft tissue opacity. For me, once I sort of take into account that this superimposition is there, I'm not overly concerned about any um, sublumbar mass effect. The next thing we want to check when we're assessing a case that has a prostatic pathology, you want to look at the descending colon as best you can. And what we're looking for is compression or displacement. So the descending colon in this case has almost nothing in it. So I, it's a little bit of a leap of faith that it's even continuing in this direction. So we don't have any real conclusive findings about descending colon. The next thing to think about when we see an enlarged prostate, other Rankin signs. So one of them is opacity. Is this a soft tissue opacity or is this a mineral opacity? Well, for me, this is a soft tissue opacity, except for this little structure right here. So this area right here, in my opinion, based on all the superimposition, it could be a mineralized feature within the prostate. But as I predictably like to do, let's go to the other view. Because if it's mineral within the prostate, maybe we're going to see it. So here I've moved to the orthogonal view, the ventral dorsal view. I do see that there's superimposition in this area of not only the entire sort of um, extra abdominal structures, including the prepuce but we also have sort of the impression of a soft tissue opacity coming out here, cranial to the pubis here. So this is probably our enlarged prostate. You can see that it does have some border effacement or I should say more like summation with the um, musculature in the region, which makes it hard to trace. I don't particularly see any mineral other than maybe a little whiff here, which is clearly outside of the prostate region. So taken together between the two views, I think it's likely that what we suspect is mineral is outside of the prostate, but I wouldn't totally exclude that it's in there because we know that the VD view makes the prostate substantially harder to see. 
One more thing, um, we looked at it on both views. One more thing to think about for you in a clinical setting when you're dealing with a prostatic question on radiographs, remind yourself of what your findings were on rectal exam. And, and if you didn't do the rectal exam for some reason, try to make um, the time to do that because the rectal exam findings will really help complement um, where you take the case. So once you're comfortable that you have um, prostatomegaly in this case, um, I think that the next sort of thing is to think about what differentials would we consider? So um, for me, I think one thing that I noticed as we were going through is I'm just gonna move these arrows out of the way to get them, make it a little clearer for us to see. One thing that I think as I was going through that I noticed is that this is relatively uniform in shape. It doesn't look particularly lateralized on the VD view, although it is maybe a whiff more towards this left side here. So I would kind of prioritize differentials for global or generalized prostatomegaly. So things like benign prostatic hyperplasia, um, prostatitis, changes like paraprostatic cysts can be quite a bit more asymmetrical than this. They can also be quite a bit larger than this, but I wouldn't fully exclude that this could be a form of paraprostatic cyst or even an abscess. When it comes to neoplasia as a differential, that would be uncommon in intact male dogs. So I would have that um, pretty low on my list. But again, you'd wanna use your rectal exam findings in conjunction with the clinical signs. So to summarize, when we see this double bladder sign in the caudal abdomen, we can think about prostatomegaly. We wanna go through our checklist of checking the opacity, verifying the sublumbar structures, and looking for colon compression. We wanna make sure that we can tell which is the bladder and which is the prostate, and it's not always as straightforward as this. If you're ever hung up on that distinction, you can always use tools like ultrasound or retrograde urethrography to help you. So be sure to review the full report associated with this case. Thanks for listening. And remember, it's your case. So please post your questions on social media.